sis and God also how devoutly and justly and blamelessly we behave ourselves among you who believe. And here is the verse. And as you know, we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father does his own children, that you would walk worthy of God who calls you unto his own kingdom and glory. This is the word of God. Let's give God a hand out of praise. Let's give God a hand out of praise. Make some Holy Ghost noise up in here. Because God is worthy to be praised. Hey, you know what? Let me make you.
Father, which are in heaven, yes. hallowed be thy holy name. Yes, Father God, we come this morning, Lord, to thank you once again, thank Lord, for yes. allowing us to assemble together, Lord, for thank no shape, form, yes. or fashion, Lord. Yes. Oh, Father God, we thank you, Lord, for those who are listening in, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for those who are here right now, Lord, to give you the praise, Lord, because it's all about you. Oh, Father God, we thank you, Lord, for being the God that you are, Lord. We yes. thank you, Lord, for allowing us, Lord, to, to, to be here, Lord. And thank you for allowing us to be in our right mind to thank recognize you, that you are the head of our life, Lord. Thank and there is no other, Lord. And, oh, Father God, we know there is a lot going on around us, yes. Lord. But we know that you are in control, Father God. And we yes. can only yes. ask you to just strengthen us where we weak and to build us up where we torn down, Lord. That we continue to stand on your word, Lord. Yes. And continue to stay rooted in your word, Lord. Yes. And that you can to hold us in the palm of your hand, Father God, because we truly yes, need you, Lord. Yes. But Lord, we thank you, Lord, for thank everything, you, Lord. We thank, thank you, Lord, for the thank you, Lord, for the good this morning, our finest, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the food you allow to eat, Lord. And we thank you for the job that we have, Lord. There are some who are going through without a job, Lord. But Lord, we ask you to lift them up, Lord. I ask you to guide them, Lord. Let them know, Lord, that you just call upon your name, Lord. Said in your word, you never leave us, nor forsake us. Lord, you said we just trust you with all our hearts. And we have our own understanding and all our ways. And acknowledge you, Father God, that you would direct our hands. So we acknowledge you right now, Lord. We ask you to help those who fall short, Lord. Oh, Lord, we pray for those who fall short right now, Lord. We ask you to lift them up, Lord. So, Father God, we pray for our, our Pastor Lee Skinner, Lord. And we pray your word, Lord. We ask you to lift them up. We pray for the, the praise team, Lord. Lord. Bringing your songs, Lord, to give you the glory, Lord. Oh, Lord, we recognize that it ain't about us. It's all about you, Lord. So you are the head of our life. You know that everything you know we're going to take place before it took place, Lord. So we thank you right now, Lord. And the God that you are, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Lord. Oh, you still are the same God, Lord. You never change, Lord. And we just thank you right now, Lord. We pray for those who on our sick list, those who are in the hospitals right now, Lord. You know I'm named. My name, Lord. We pray for James Little, Lord. Mary Wise, Lord. Pray for Stephen. Pray for them, Lord. Just feel a needle that you continue to lift them up, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, have mercy right now. Lord. Yes, Lord. So good, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, we just can't thank you enough, Lord. Oh, please, Lord. And please forgive us of our sins, Lord. Yes. Bring them on ourselves, Lord. Oh, Lord, but there are many, Lord. But we ask for forgiveness, Lord. And you are forgiving God, Lord. Thank you right now. Thank Lord. you. Thank you. All thank you. Lord. In your son thank Jesus' you, name, we thank pray. You, God. Amen. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
to. Help me, God. Help me, Lord. Jesus. Gather the children together. God.
want to be said. Help yes. us to hear what we need to hear so that at the end of the day, yes. we will have grown more than anything else. Yes. The glory, the praise, and the honor will belong that belongs only to you will stay with you. Yes. And we ask these things in the name of your Son, who is Jesus, the very yes. Christ of God. Yes. And it's in his name we pray and say thank you. I want to revisit uh, 1 Kings chapter 3, uh, just a message of exhortation to our pastors. And there are three verses, three verses that I want to lift up today in 1 Kings chapter 3. It is going to be verse 3, verse 6, and verse 14. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 3, verse 6, and verse number 14. And this is within the context, again, of Solomon, who has just become the king of Israel after following the footsteps of his father, David. And Solomon loved the Lord, in his verse 3, in 1 Kings chapter 3, walking in the statutes of his father, David, except that he sacrificed and burned incense, or burned incense at the high places. Verse 6 says, And Solomon said, You have shown great mercy to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in truth, in righteousness, and in a brightness of heart yeah. with you. You have continued this great kindness for him. Yes. You have given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. Mm -hmm. And finally, verse 14. So, if you walk in my ways right. to keep my statutes and my judgments mm -hmm. as your father David walked, mm -hmm. then I will lengthen your days. Yes, sir. Just by way of, yes. of, of exhortation to the fathers and all of us that are listening yes. today, walk with the Lord. All right. Walk with Amen. the Lord. Amen. The grass with and the flower faded thereof. Right. The word of our God right. shall stand forever. Yes, sir. Today is a day again that nationally we are celebrating and honoring our fathers uh, because again it is a day that recognizes their contributions to our lives. Amen. The reality for all of us, the reality for most of us should be that when it comes to the measurement, the evaluation, the value of a father, it settles in one of two places. Or actually you could say it is settled in two places. First of all, it is settled by what God sees in a father. And secondly, it is settled in what the children see in their father. And so the reality is that there can be no children without a father. There can be no father without right. children. Right. And some way, somehow, they complement one another. Yeah. They should complement one another. <clears throat> it becomes a reality to us Amen. that God in his word has given fathers for the purpose of nurturing. God has given fathers for the purpose of raising. God has given fathers for the purpose of being the priest of the household, one who provides that covering for his children. You remember the story of Job. The Bible yes, says that even though Job's children were grown, Bible says that as they gathered together at their houses from week to week for various feast days, the word of God says that Job prayed for his children that if some way, somehow, they had rebelled against God, that they had sinned against God, that he was a covering for them. So we understand that in order for me to be a father as God would have me to be and to be a father that my child or children have a proper view of who I am. Number one, I've got to walk with the Lord. Yeah. And when I walk with the Lord, according to this text that we're looking at, uh, Solomon would say to us that I have to walk in reality. I have to walk in reality. This is a wonderful story because it paints for us a picture of a young man who was considered the wisest man, the wealthiest man, the most well-known man in the world, but we view him from the perspective of how he viewed his father. I'm saying it to the fathers that I'll give today, I'm saying it to all of us who are followers of Jesus Christ, 
that one way or another people have a view of us. And the view again that Solomon had of his father was one worthy of honor. It was one that was worthy of recognition. It was one that was worthy of respect because he had a view of his father from the perspective of the Lord. And so the word would remind us when we look at Solomon's life, what he did not know in a very real sense that his father was actually the father that he was through much adversity. Yeah. Uh, it was not an easy time for David while he was raising up Solomon, but Solomon still saw his father as worthy of respect, even though he did not fully understand the adversity yes. that, that David was going through in raising up Solomon. Yes. Watch now. When you think about it, today fathers, you to be honored today because you are leading your families and your children through one of the most adverse times in their lives. There is, there is the pandemic uh, where people are testing positive along with yeah. a lot of death. Yeah. There's pressure of economic change. There are people that are no longer on jobs as they used to be. People are looking for jobs and jobs now are things that have transpired earlier in the year. There's this process of trying to catch up with what has been lost. Yeah. Uh, we are dealing with the fact that there are some, and I and I emphasize some, evil police who choose to brutalize people based on color. We we have prejudice that has plagued this nation since its inception. We have peaceful protests against against inequality. We have. The poor choices of rioting and looting that we saw earlier in the protest. And all of this is additional to the day-to-day -day problems of life. And so, fathers, you are leaving your children in, a, in an adverse time yeah. in their lives. Yeah. But you can follow something. You can learn something from the life of Solomon and his relationship with his father, David, that even though David was going through adversity, Solomon saw his father as walking in reality. He saw him walk in reality. And father, I just again encourage you to be true, to be yeah. Factual to be real in your walk. Notice what Solomon says, or what the word says in chapter verse 3. And Solomon loved the Lord. Uh -huh. He walked in the statues of his father David, except that he sacrificed and burned incense at the high places. One of the legacies, one of the examples, one of the things that, that demonstrates a father to be honored is that Solomon, the Bible says, he loved the Lord. That's right. And why was that evidence that he loved the Lord? The Bible would clearly say is that he walked in the statutes of his father, David. So it was evident that David apparently taught his son how to love the Lord. Yeah. It is apparent that he encouraged his son to love the Lord and fathers today, all of us. All of us are leaving some kind of legacy. All of yeah. us are leaving something behind. All of us are leaving something that our children are inheriting yeah. from yeah. us. And what greater legacy that we could leave for our children yeah. that they know we love them. Yeah. 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 What, what greater legacy can a child have to know that they love the Lord and it is a direct result of the examples, the the uh, the uh, compassion, the, the the faithfulness, the honor that they have seen in their fathers coming up. So Solomon, the Bible says, in his beginning, he was walking mm -hmm. in the statues of his father David, and the evidence was that he what he loved the Lord. Listen, listen, guys. There are a lot of things that we can give our children. We can give them. We can give them the ability to know how to work. That's a demonstration of our love. That we can give them the ability to know how to think. Uh, that that's a demonstration of our love. We can give them the ability to be able to do well in school. That's a demonstration of our Amen. love. And the greatest thing that we can do is to raise them up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Yeah. It is the greatest thing that we can do to demonstrate that we love because the greatest legacy that any of us ought to have is that we love the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. 
And we ought to love him no matter what. We ought to love him no matter what the situation may be. I know our world is in a sense of unrest right now, but we ought to demonstrate that we love the Lord. And notice that the idea or the, the, the issue here with Solomon is that he was walking and it was an active walk. It was a present walk. It was happening all the time. That's one of the things that I believe that God will say to us as we walk as walk in reality as fathers, we ought to be loving the Lord. I know it get tough. I know it get rough, but we got to love the Lord. Yeah. I know sometimes, I mean, folk get on your 22nd thousand nerve. I get that. But you got to love the Lord. I know sometimes the children aren't always doing what they ought to be doing. But you got to love the Lord because the love that you have for the Lord is going to be the thing that's going to control everything else that you do as it relates to your children, as it relates to your family. Brothers, some of you that are out there, it does not matter. She could be the wicked witch of the West, but you got to love the Lord and show your children. Somebody want to help me here for just a moment. You got to show your children that you love the Lord in spite of the fact you and mama may not get along. You and your ex-wife, they, you may not get along. But the reality is, brother, you got to love the Lord. Because you're leaving a legacy for your children. Not only does Solomon walk in reality, as the Bible would say, Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statues of his father, except that he sacrificed and burned incense at high places. You got to love the Lord, but then you got to understand also, you living it out, but you got to understand, brothers, that you, you, you are not always perfect. That's what I love about the Word of God. Every time I go to the Word of God, when I look at the human beings in the Word of God, it gives me a sense of encouragement because I recognize that there's always that possibility yes. of an exception. Yeah. Yeah. There's something about my life that I still got to work on. There's right. something about all of us that we're still working through, even though we love the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. There's always that exception yeah, yeah, yeah. that we're still working through. Oh, so yeah. not only did he he walk in reality, here's the other thing that I would encourage you to do. You got to walk in remembrance. All right. You have to yeah. walk in remembrance. Look at verse 6. And Solomon said, I would pick it up at verse 4 just for context if you will. Now the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there. But that was a great high place. Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. Yeah. And Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. God said, ask what shall I give you? Solomon said, you have shown great mercy to your servant, David, my father. Watch this. Because he walked before you in truth, in righteousness, uh, in uprightness of heart with you. You have continued this great kindness for him, and you have given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. Fathers, you got to keep this in mind. There are things that you do right now that your children are always going to remember that you've yeah. done. Yeah, right. Yeah. There are some of us who are living right now that our children can remember things that we've done in our past. Yeah, right. But it was because of the things that they saw in our past that has actually motivated them yeah. to still love yeah. 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 Right. In, in, in other words, in other words, Solomon would be reminded, he would he is now praying to God and he's saying to his father, You have shown great mercy to your servant David, my father. Why? Because he walked before you in truth. Uh -huh. yeah. And what's amazing about that is that Solomon had no idea of the adversity yeah. that David was experiencing while he walked yeah. before the Lord. Uh, right now. Because remember, now when you, when you think about when you think about Solomon, when you think about Solomon, think about Solomon, or think about David, David was considered a great warrior. David was considered a great worshiper of God. And when yeah, yeah, we yeah. read David's story in 2 Samuel chapter 11, we have an exception. Yeah. Right. In chapter 2 Samuel chapter 11, there's the exception that's there because the Bible says in the days when the king should have been going to war, 
David found himself on the top rooftop of the palace yeah. and he saw a woman bathing, hold mm -hmm. that woman to himself, uh, committed sexual immorality mm -hmm. with her. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that she finally gave him the word that she was with child. Yeah. Of course, we know the Bible, unfortunately, the Bible teaches that he had Uriah, that same woman by the name of Bathsheba. He had her husband murdered because he tried to cover up what he had done. Right. And because of this, the Bible says that that very child that was conceived in that sexually immoral relationship, the Bible says that God allowed that child to My die. Lord. Yes, sir. And then God, then God says, He says to Solomon, He says to Solomon, when 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 uh, He says to David, after David admitted, Lord, I messed up, I have sinned before you, and he asked God. For forgiveness. The Bible says that God said, I will forgive you, but watch this, but the sword will never leave your house. Right. Yeah, yeah. Subsequent to that, the Bible clearly says that after that, Bathsheba and, and David had Solomon. And so now Solomon is one of, if you will, the last child of David, and he is growing up in adversity, but he has no idea how bad he is because his Daddy is walking uh -huh. with the Lord. Yeah. 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 You ought to hear what I'm saying. Yeah. You, ought to, you ought to hear what I'm saying. Yeah. Notice, notice how bad things were. If I could just, just, just to rehearse just a couple of things. He, he committed adultery. Mm -hmm. He had Uriah murdered. Yeah. Yeah. He was given the prophecy of the sword. Yeah. He repented, and of course, that child died. Right. On top of that, his first son by the name of Amnon raped his Half sister, we're going to call it Tamar. Yeah, yeah. Amnon was then murdered by Absalom. Yeah. Absalom now actually uh, 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 decides to rebel against his daddy yeah. and try to take over the kingdom. Mm -hmm. David suffered through the return of Absalom. He deceived his daddy. He had a rebellion against his daddy. He, 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 as a result, David had to leave Jerusalem because of Absalom. Absalom actually committed sexual immorality with the concubines of David. Yeah. And then Absalom died and David had to mourn Absalom's death. David had rebellion by Sheba. Yeah. David had to go through three years of famine in Israel. David, he, he, he got to a point that his own soldiers say, hey man, you weep not, you can't go to war with us no more. Yeah. 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 And because of that plague, 70,000 people died because David called for a census that God never intended for him to call for. So David was a father in adversity, but all Solomon knew was that my dad had walked in my That's what I'm saying. That's that's what you do as a good father. All of the trouble that's going on around you, your children don't have to know everything. The, 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 the problems that you're facing, it does not have to always affect your children. Listen, that's no doubt about it. I grew up believing we were rich. Yeah. Oh, yes, I did. I grew up. I grew up believing we were rich because when we left, we left Louisiana in 1968. Yeah. My dad was making 55 cents an hour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is. We we living in a nice house. Yeah. We yeah. we got we got we got a we got a garage with a car in it. Uh, yeah. We we got we got we got a garden in the backyard that got all kind of vegetables yeah. and uh -huh. And, and we got ducks and we got chickens and got a little dog named Brownie running around. We were, we were, I thought we were some rich folk. Yeah. And then Dad decided, oh, we will move from the east and come to the west and used to praise the Lord. Yeah. We get here and used to living in the house. I thought that was one of the most beautiful houses I ever seen. Big old yard and all of that. A pony already in the backyard, ready for us. I thought we were some rich folk. 
But my dad was operating in adversity. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't making a whole lot of money, but he still knew what how to provide for his family. Yeah. And all yeah. I'm saying that regardless of the problems that we face today, Daddy, you can still lead your family. Right. You can still be a holy man. You can still be a faithful man. Notice what Solomon saw. Yeah. Look at verse six. He says, you show great mercy to your father, David, my father, because he walked before you, what? In truth. Yes. Meaning that my dad, my dad was a reliable man. He walked in truth. Yeah. Not, only, not only would he say that he walked in truth, he would say that he also walked, what? In righteousness. Yeah. He walked in righteousness. He, he, he saw his father do the right thing. He saw his father live in honesty. And then he says, he walked in uprightness of heart. He, mean, he meant that he was a man of integrity. Yes. He was a man of sincerity. Yes. And what I'm saying to us, brothers, I know we're talking about folk in the Bible, but guess what? We are folk in the Bible. We yes. can do the very thing that Solomon did or Solomon yes. saw in David. And he remembered how his father walked, and that walk affected how he lived. That's right. Even in the midst of the adversity, even in the midst of the pandemic, even in the midst of the problems with economics, even yeah. in the midst of the prejudice that's going on in our country yeah. right now, Father, you can still lead your family in the midst of all this adversity because you walk it with the Lord. It makes all the difference when you walk it with the Lord. It just makes all the difference in the world when you walk it with the Lord. I know I'm talking to fathers today, but I think I'm, everybody can understand. When you walk it with the Lord, there's something about what you're going through that the pressures of life don't have a way of getting them down. When you walk it with the Lord. Yes, when you're walking with the Lord, you will protect your family. You yeah. will see about what's yes, going on. But you got a way of doing it in such a manner that your children have no idea yeah. that chaos yeah. is all around yeah. They have no idea of the pressures that you are experiencing. They have no idea of the things that you're praying about. Why? Because you're walking with the yeah. Lord. Your family can see that. They can notice that. They can recognize that. Let me tell you something, Daddy. If you don't panic in the house, the house ain't going to panic. All right. If you don't give up in the house, folk in the house won't give up. Yeah. If you don't turn in the towel, I guarantee you, folk in your house won't turn it, especially your children, yeah. why? because they're looking up to you. Yeah. Yeah, because they see that you're that's walking. Yeah. You're walking. Yes. The Here's the final thing. Here's the final thing. He, he walked in reality. He, that, was, that was his active walk. That's what he was doing. Why? Because it was attached to what? Seeing the, him walking, seeing how his father walked, how his father walked with the Lord, how his father was obedient to the Lord. He said that he remembered how his father walked. He remembered yeah. the things that his father did in the past. And then finally now, he's hearing a word from the Lord himself. Yeah. Yeah. Look at what happens in verse 14. He says, so if you walk in my ways, that's the Lord talking now. Yeah. That's the Lord talking now. Watch this, watch this. Let me go back up to verse 10. I want y'all to see this. It says that the speech pleased the Lord right. that Solomon had asked this thing. In other words, Solomon asked the Lord to give him wisdom. Mm -hmm. uh, verse number 9. Therefore, yes. give your servant an understanding heart to judge your yeah. people. Yes. Talk about that on last Sunday. That I'm going to serve between good and evil. Uh -huh. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? The speech pleased the Lord, and Solomon, that Solomon had asked this thing. Then God said to him, because you have asked this thing and have not asked long life for yourself, nor have asked riches for yourself, nor have asked the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern justice. Behold, I have done according to your words. See that I have given you a wise and understanding heart, so that there has not been anyone like before yeah. you, nor shall any like you rise after you. Mm -hmm. And I have also given you what you have not asked, mm -hmm. both riches and honor, yeah. so that yeah. there shall not be anyone like you among yeah. the kings 
all your days. Now watch this. So if you walk in my ways to keep my statutes uh -huh. and my commandments as your father walked, then he says, I will uh -huh. live in your days. So not only was that the, that was that the walk of reality, but that he was to walk in reality, he was to walk uh, uh, in remembrance. The final thing is that he was to walk with resolve. He was to walk with resolve, meaning, meaning that it, it was a definite decision that he was making. Right. It was a definite, God said, if you continue, if you will do what you say you will yes, do, sir. if you continue to walk the way that I say you ought to walk, he says, then I will continue to bless you. Yeah. And so, fathers, I'm saying to you today, in your presence, you got to walk with the Lord. Yeah. You got to remember, yeah. you, you're living a life now so that your, your children will remember yeah. how you walk with the Lord. And now you got to make up your mind and say, I'm going to keep on right, now. walking with the yes, Lord. Sir. Brothers, I don't know about yes, you sir. all, but I think it's worth yeah. just keep on yeah. walking with the Lord. Why? Because he's proven that's a track record. That God has shown you that you can rely on Him. You can trust Him. And yeah. here's the reason that God says if, because there's always the possibility uh -huh. that I can get off track. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that's a possibility. I can I can get off track. There's a possibility I can miss some things. There's a possibility that I can start looking at the wrong yeah. thing. There's a possibility I can start desiring the wrong thing. So I Yeah. Oh, I 
I want you to give up but your son Isaac. Amen. Abraham walked with the Lord to the bone that he had the wood for fire. He had a thought to lay down. He had a knife in his head ready to come down on his wall. But he believed in his walk with the Lord.
walk with you. Yes, sir. Yes, Lord. So know that you're walking with us. Makes life a whole lot more manageable. We sleep well at night. We work well during the day. We rest well at recreation. Because you've given us the sense of your presence. To know that all is well. Because we're walking with the Lord. Thank you, God. I pray for my friend, my brother. But Dave Callahan, as he has moments when he's missing his wife and yes, concerned about her health, God help him to know he may be lonely, but he is Thank not alone. Because you know how to walk with him. Yes, yes, yes. And for every father that may be at the side of my voice, every father that will hear this message, yes, help them know, Lord, yes, there's nothing yes, like walking with you. Yes, and to demonstrate yes. that walk before their children. Yes. So that their children yes. will inherit a yes. legacy. Yes. They may not have a whole lot of money. Yes. But they yes. will have a legacy of knowing yes. how to walk yes. with the Lord. Yes. Thank you again for helping yes. us to see Solomon's yes. view of God. Yes. Through his view of his father. Yes. How we thank you, God. How we bless your name. How we honor you for being the God that you are. We pray now for those who have heard your word and those who may respond to your word to know again that there's nothing like walking with you. That you will touch every heart, touch every mind. We ask this in Jesus' name. In his name alone we pray. Amen. Glory, glory. Thank you. Now that someone who is listening is not trusting Jesus as your Savior, you have not yet come to the point of having him to be real in your life. I want to let you know today the invitation is open. I said it. He did. He did live. He did die. He was buried in a grave. God raised him from the dead. He did ascend back to his father. He's sitting on his right hand right now making Bible says intercession for you and I. But he makes the promise that one day he's coming back. And he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. So today we want you to be part of that reality. I'm telling you, you can, you can, you can be the father that God wants you to be if you're walking with the Lord. Because what He provides for you, He provides for His Spirit. He provides for you the ability to please Him. But you gotta make the resolve. You gotta make the decision today. I don't know who you are, but I would encourage you to make the decision today to walk with the Lord and trust Jesus Christ. As your personal sin. Yes, sir. Gotta believe you died. Gotta believe you despaired. You gotta believe that God raised him from the dead. Yeah. You gotta believe that God sent him yes. so that every sin you've ever committed, past, present, and future, could be forgiven. God sent his son. And the thing he hated the most is what his son became yeah. so that God in turn could give you the ability to live a life that pleases him. So today, we have a trust in Him. It's an opportunity to do that. You may be listening by way of here, live streaming. You may be sitting next to someone. You may know someone that invited you to come and listen today. Give them a call. And tell them, listen, I need to know more about this Jesus that the Reverend was talking about. I need to know more about Jesus. That we still seems like we, we must love Him. Just, just whoever, whoever you may be. You can also call 703 672. 9847 is glad to uh, give you more insight to what it means to trust Jesus as your Savior. You can contact us by website, do so by Facebook, do so again by the phone number that I just gave, 713 672 9847. Father God, I would love you again and thank you again for your invitation. Thank you for this opportunity to present your word. We pray that you will be pleased. We may grow more than anything else. The glory is yours. Jesus' name we pray. Jesus name. Amen. It's offering time. Yeah. It's offering time. Yeah. It is offering time. One, one of the, the wonderful things that has been taking place as a result, we've been uh, in this pandemic, not able to come to the church as we the building where we normally would meet uh, Sunday to Sunday, midweek as we have. Uh, we've been meeting members uh, kind of in the marketplace, people shopping and just, just 
you know, just those places that we need, not a whole lot, but it happens. And uh, I have been saying to everybody, I have no doubt, I don't have any doubt that you've been blessed. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I know you've been blessed because the evidence is, is shown in how you give it. And I know, so I know, I know you all are blessed. I'm, I'm seeing, we see it every Sunday, we witness it, our brothers know about it. Junior sees it every week. We we know beyond the shadow of God that you all are blessed. Yeah. And we praise God for you. And we pray again that you just continue to trust God with the resources that God has given you. Um, and to know again, the Bible says that God loves what a cheerful giver. And to know again as a result that God is able. So I pray that you would. And Father, thank you so much again for the giver and for the gift. We pray that you continue to help us to bear together the wisdom and knowledge to understand and use it for the honor of your kingdom, for the magnifying of your name, and for the growth of your church. We ask you in Christ's name and this alone we pray. Amen. 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 I want to do this right now just to recognize our, our birthday. Uh, Y'all will give me a power clap. Birthday uh, participants for this coming week: Ayana Johnson, Ethan Edward, Patricia Page, Ella Berry, James Johnson, Corrine Brazil, Andrea Stamps, Tyler Esprit, Eve Harris, Shannon Jason, and Ida Strayden. And for Marcia to my baby sister Stephanie, uh, her birthday today, and we certainly thank God for her. Uh, I was reflecting on that. Uh, I tell y'all, uh, boy, the first time I saw Stephanie, I was absolutely fascinated. She was the biggest little person I ever seen in my life, and she was she was in that room with all of those other children, and uh, and 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 all of the rest of them were. They were beige, and, uh, and, and here she was, almost beige, uh, but she was a big girl. It was just absolutely yes. intriguing, and then now to see her become the beautiful woman that she's become the first time for her. Happy anniversary to Wesley and Virgil Edwards, 20 years, Richard and Patricia Davis, 21 years, Joe and Leather Griffin, 38 years. Wow, wow, wow. God bless you all. Congratulations to each and every one of you. I want to do this on behalf of, uh, of our team and more, more, more me than anything else. I want to apologize for the technical difficulties we had last Sunday and also last Wednesday. Um, um, every now and then, things just happen. I mean, we try our best to make sure everything stays in order. But sometimes yeah. this stuff just don't work like we think it ought to work. So I want to encourage us to uh, uh, keep that in mind, please, ma'am, and please, sir. Tomorrow night is the conference call for prayer. Everybody ought to be on the line. So I look forward to all of us sharing. Tuesday at 7, MOC and Sister Love. We know the numbers that we've been given. MOC is going to be the numbers that we, the number we've been using as far as the conference line. The Sister Love is the new conference line that we're using. That's at 7 o'clock on this coming Tuesday. Uh, no prayer or Bible study this coming Wednesday. If you do the prayer Monday night and also do the Bible study on Tuesday, if you do that all week long, you're going to be strengthened in everything else that you need to do. Amen? Amen? So please do that. That is your opportunity. Here are some opportunities for service for us. This coming Thursday, uh, we're going to be feeding people of the community at 11.30 this coming Thursday. Uh, and if you're interested in doing that, please, if you're interested, please call the office uh, to let Julia know. Uh, we don't want, we, don't, we can't have too many people here, but if you think that you're interested in doing it, give us a call and we will put you on schedule in the day. Anyone will call after that, we'll let you know we got enough people. But also this coming Friday, it's another opportunity at 12 o'clock, Lord willing, if the weather doesn't mess us up or anything like that, Lord willing, we'll be here at 12 o'clock. Uh, that's a group of people who are giving uh, milk, gallons of milk and produce. 
We're going to have that available on our campus this coming Friday at 12 o'clock. So I want to invite everybody that will give us a call to know again that you'd be interested in coming on Friday at 12 o'clock for us to, uh, to be able to do that giveaway. And then, Lord willing, Lord willing, next Sunday at 9 a.m., all, right. all the Lord right. come out, we will have a drive-in right. service Woo! in commemoration of our 61st church anniversary. Yeah. So I pray everybody will join in on that. So we're not going to have Sunday school today. We're not going to have it on next Sunday, but we will resume Sunday school first Sunday in July. I'm going to give you a schedule this week on how we're going to work it out. And I pray that all of us will participate. Please, ma'am, and please, sir. Amen. Is there any other announcements we need to make? Remember to do the church anniversary videos and tell them about how we fought. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I tell you what, Junior, I'm not going to worry about the pop quiz. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I just want to say happy Father's Day. Don't send it out. Don't worry about it. I thought about something. Don't worry about that. We'll do that later on. But I do want to remind us for the church anniversary, we ask everybody to do a short video. Everybody would. Please do a short video because uh, we want to see your face next Sunday. As many of us as possible. And uh, it's going to be put together, collage going to be put together that we're going to put it on Facebook that we can show each other just saying thank God for 61 years of service and congratulating us, if you would, as members of the body of Christ, that God has allowed us to serve for uh, 61 years. So don't forget, remember you need to put your camera like this, like this. Record yourself as long as you can, less than a minute. No, as long as you can, less than a minute. I'll take you for that something. But do that for us. Uh, because remember, there's a whole lot of people that's going to do it. So, so if you would, just re make that recording and send it in. It's going to be media gsmbc at gmail.com. Media gsmbc at, at, g at gmail.com. Okay? Camera set like this. Make your video. Send it in. And we're going to enjoy seeing each other after we get through with our celebration Sunday. We're going to spend time Sunday afternoon watching each other and <laughs> greeting each other because it's been a while that we have seen each other. Amen. Amen. Judy, thank you. Uh, Warren, thank you. We got a guest. Go with me. Oh, yes, my birds. Hi, hi. With us today. Thank y'all so much. The uh, praise team here expanded a little Amen. bit today. Thank y'all so much. For your presence here today, Tyrone, thank you again for leading us in prayer uh, on today. Let's stand as we get ready to make our exit uh, from wherever we are. Some of you all getting ready to go back to bed. Yep. Some of you all getting ready to eat. Whatever it may be, whatever it may be, thank you for being part of the uh, of the, uh, the worship experience on today. Lord, thank you so much for bringing us together. It's another Father's Day, but more than anything else, it's the day that you have made and we rejoice and are made glad in it. We pray now that as we continue to move forward, you help us to always walk in the Lord. Help us to walk in reality to do it right now. Help us to remark, to walk in remembrance, to show us what we saw in the past. But help us to walk with resolve that we're going to make up our mind that no matter what, we're going to always walk with the Lord. Be with us now, leave God, God as the record that protect us, and we'll be careful to give you the honor, the praise, and the glory that you owe us for us alone. Pray it all in Jesus' name. And all who agree, say amen. 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 God bless you.